Hello and welcome back to yet another series on this channel. My name is Saiken and today we're going to start a let's play with the exquisite timing achievement. This is my second attempt to do the achievement and it's not just on uh, the normal commander difficulty because in the last attempt that would have been easily achieved. No, it is uh, to my knowledge, world's first attempt to do a legendary Iron Man uh, plus permanent dark events for good measure type of um, exquisite timing. For those who haven't seen the first series, uh, I'll leave a link in the description down below. Feel free to check it out. Um, it will go over some of the details. Uh, the general idea of exquisite timing is finishing the game in four and a half months on legendary difficulty. Why is it such a big deal that legendary difficulty is much, much, much more difficult than commander difficulty? Well, for one, everything takes uh, twice um, as long in minimum. So making contact to other regions, uh, uh, research takes twice as long. Building uh, process even takes four times as long. All of the intel costs to do uh, um, uh, new uh, um, uh, connections to other uh, to other areas are also doubled. So it is more resource uh, draining, and specifically the timing portion of it is incredibly dense. Why did we fail the first time? As a recap for those who haven't watched the first playthrough, the big uh, challenge was that despite doing everything almost perfectly optimal. Uh, there uh, was bad RNG involved where essentially um, we did not get specific resistance orders or specific uh, scanning time reductions. So without uh, those specific RNG um, yeah, benefits, it's impossible to actually do it on Legendary. If you're just looking at the research time that all of the Shadow Lab projects take and all of the projects uh, that lead up to Shadow Lab and you're doing zero upgrades whatsoever. I was running most of the run with only four soldiers and ballistic weapons. Uh, you will still not be able to do it on Legendary because the timing just doesn't um, uh, uh, pin out. So what I'm doing in this run is I'm basically restarting uh, the campaign on Legendary Iron Man difficulty over and over until we get a start where I can um, at least uh, use some of the resistance orders in our favor. Specifically, we are looking for a couple of resistance orders from the Reapers that are very, very helpful. Uh, the resistance network, which allows us to make contact with new regions instantly. And that should depending on how it plays out, shape of around uh, 28 days, which was as much as I uh, was um, lacking the last time. So we're, uh, we were failing uh, the timing by about 28 uh, days. I'm pretty confident that with the re uh, right resistance order, we're definitely going to uh, get a better shot. I also learned a couple of things along the way just to tweak uh, the run a tiny bit more. So without further ado, uh, and I'll explain those and the optimized strategy as we go along. Without further ado, we're going into a legend uh, mode. We're turning on Reaper as our starting from uh, the um, HQ. We're also turning on uh, Grim Horizon for dark events, permanent dark events. Uh, which just makes it a bit more difficult and interesting. And we're, of course, going to enable Iron Man. We're using the normal DLC content. Um, that shouldn't be a problem. So let's jump right into the game. And here we are just in the adventure. Let me run you through uh, what basically happened. This is a modless run. I should have uh, mentioned that uh, to begin with. The only exception is a mod that allows me to sk uh, skip the Gate Crasher mission, mainly because A, I know that you guys are tired of seeing me playing through Gate Crasher. It's not a really fun exercise. And B, I also needed to restart quite a few times to um, actually get to the point where I wanted to be and get the right resistance orders just to have the right game seat. It's still legendary difficulty. It's still Iron Man, as you can see. There is no safe game. It's just safe and exit. It's still uh, permanent dark events. So all of that um, is as expected. The only thing that um, actually has changed is we were um, uh, we were finishing the first mission. 
and uh, I didn't yet upgrade any of the rookies. Let's take a look at our roster. We got Zirkim Hayward and Quickfeed for the first mission. Uh, Ed Galen Poe waiting, Sonor, uh, Mike the Public Bra uh, Bravo, uh, Noxus Dark Tower, Jessica Rabbit Jones, Renvin, Divert, Sane, only Roby is essentially missing. Almost the entire character pool has uh, joined up. So let's see what we got. Zirkim is going to be a bit slower than expected. Oh, nice. He's going to be our sniper in this run. Good job, Zirkim. Welcome, buddy. Like it. Um, good. As per the usual, I'll do the color coding afterwards. Um, let's look at Hayward. Hayward, on the other hand, will be our specialist. Perfect. Uh, the two classes that I like to get um, uh, first and foremost. So that's really good. There we go. Just a bit of color coding. And finally, Quick Feet, who was a specialist the last time, this time becomes a ranger. Interesting. Good. So we're missing a grenadier, but that's not the end of the world. The next promotion automatically will be a ranger, um, a grenadier. Good. So those would be our three first soldiers plus Bones, aka Charles Brown, who's going to be our Reaper since we started with the Reaper faction. Perfect. So let's talk a little bit about strategy here for a second. So always we're starting with um, the standard uh, Intel and supplies. We do have nine power available, zero engineers, zero scientists. Um, and if we're now taking a look at what we can build, um, basically it's either resistance ring or guerrilla technic school for most of the time. Um, there had been a couple of comments from uh, from your side um, why a laboratory first start, um, why that wouldn't be a good idea or why that wouldn't be an option. It's definitely an option. Hear me out though, I think with resistance ring we are increasing the chance that I can get covered ops missions for uh, scientists or engineers, which is very helpful to uh, to speed up the research process. The second downside about the laboratory first is it'll take a long time to build and afterwards it's just doubling the amount of scientists that you do have so even if we had a laboratory it wouldn't automatically by itself do much uh, we would need to have uh, scientists in order to staff them into the laboratory so we're going to go for a laboratory but uh, my elaborate um, learning from the last time is we're going resistance ring first this time i'm trying to push um, the uh, factions a bit more than the last time so that we do have more resistance orders. I think that was incredibly helpful. I also will probably try to go for more promotions uh, so that our team is um, higher level. We were failing uh, to have kernels in the last run. Um, second building will be immediately proving grounds into Skulljack so that we uh, can follow the storyline mission. Once we do have a Skulljack, <clears throat> I'm going to cut the proving grounds and we'll uh, build a laboratory in its place. That way we should uh, definitely be fine. Um, afterwards, uh, there is a high chance that we're going for power relay because we need to power the shadow chamber, which actually costs five uh, um, energy. Uh, that way, once the power relay is done, we're hopefully having um, an area here excavated and can directly jump into the shadow chamber, which is needed to actually get uh, the whole research rolling. We need to plan it that tight. And yes, uh, the Guerrilla Tactics School will come again a little bit later. So squad size upgrades, uh, squad size upgrades will not be available at the beginning. And uh, maybe in the sixth room, it's either an infirmary um, or a training center just to round up uh, the, the options here. I'm not 100% sure yet. In terms of research, I felt that our research last time was sound. Um, I will again not go for weapons, but I would go for um, armor. The first thing that we're doing though is alien biotech because we want to have the ability to, re uh, to 
um, do an autopsy on the um, officer. The officer then prompts us to build uh, the, prov uh, the proving grounds, uh, which is exactly what we want to do. Once that has been done, um, we can start with uh, hybrid materials and then basically armor upgrade. One thing that I'm going to do different in uh, the limelight of not having the uh, proving grounds is whenever we have that extra tiny bit of research, I'm probably going to uh, research blue screen rounds. <clears throat> so that we can have a better agency against mechanical units. The last run really showed that that was, without weapon upgrades, that was by far the most struggling condition. There were a couple of mechanical units that were just too strong. We're starting in North America this time. Um, before we uh, do start, though, um, I talked a lot. Let's just double check that everything is uh, ready. We're starting with a resistance ring, as mentioned. Uh, the armory is set. We don't need to do anything. Uh, we probably don't want to build anything either. I need the supplies most likely for the proving ground. So we want to make sure that we keep them safe for now. And we either can start gathering intel, which definitely would be an option, but given that in the first month we might need a couple extra supplies, I'll actually start with scanning for the supplies over here so that we can afford the building. I don't want to lose any time by not having the building available. There we go. So that's 61 supplies. Perfect. Rookies is definitely not what we need. I uh, think that is a bad random spawn. It would have been great to get a scientist. Um, that's the worst that could have happened. But we got to deal with it. Um, even if the rest of the start was fine, we might get screwed over with uh, some of the random spawns. We will see. So that's our first mission here. And we get an engineer that's also not bad. Uh, probably even better than the, uh, than the first scientist because we need to start expanding. That's non-optional. And the only thing that we need to do is sab sabotage a transmitter, which I am happy to do. We need um, a grenadier. So let's think about whom whom we can leave at home. I definitely want to level the Reaper. The Reaper and the Ranger are a bit overlapping in their skills. And instead, uh, let's take um, Renvin here, who's going to be our Gren uh, how, who's going to become our Grenadier. Almost in all of the runs, Renvin ended up being a Grenadier with that nice little cigar and the Aviators. Good. In terms of equipment, there's really not that much uh, that we can do, but there are a couple of things. I said it's a modless run, um, but we do have some goodies. This here are the DLC weapons. For those of you who are familiar with the first run, I explained it in detail. I will not repeat it too often, but since I expect a few newcomers, the DLC weapons are essentially from one of the DLCs. If you are um, earning gold medals, I think it was, uh, you get a DLC weapon for each category, so an assault rifle, a heavy uh, rifle, a shotgun, and the like. Uh, those are lightly modified weapons. In this case here, it has a scope uh, in there, so it's tendentially a tiny bit better than a normal weapon. We're going to use those just to get uh, the extra edge. Maximum rifle is uh, the equivalent. Also, they look incredibly cool. And that is really it. I think those were the only... Um, uh, weapons that we can get. Unfortunately, the DLC weapons do not offer vector rifles, uh, so it's standard vector rifle for um, for our Reaper only. Yeah, and that's it. Easy difficulty means uh, two to three uh, packs, and we want to get that engineer. So I'm expecting, or I'm trying to go for for a flawless mission because we want to keep the um, the. Uh, injury times to an absolute minimum. Let's jump into it. All right, we're back. So, um, transmitter missions are pretty difficult, specifically as first missions, you usually never want to have those. Um, but 
Beggars can't be choosers, so I'm happy with whatever mission type we're getting for now. We gotta get here and we gotta get there fast, like very fast. Nice uh, advantage for us is we do have a Reaper with us. And that in return means we can abuse the stealth uh, power of the Reaper to its, um, to its maximum extent. There is the first group of enemies. Moving up. Definitely double movement all the way up here. And Haywire moves up as well. Well, I regret not taking our, um, our assault with us. Because uh, the melee attack definitely would have dealt a lot of damage. Sector is a strong target, and I'm wondering to which degree we might want to already use the claymore. It's a pack of two, though, so not particularly concerning. Let's open up with a kill on this guy. There we go. Zirkim nailed it. Love it. Good job, buddy. Okay, so where is Sektored? Sektored stands here, is not triggered yet, apparently. Um, which means one of the best things that I can do is get us an extra turn. It's all about efficiency, guys. So what I'm trying to do is removing cover, getting us an extra turn by destroying the transmitter and damaging the sector at the same time, which is quite an effective uh, way of starting. Yeah, that here is a nice flanking position. However, I'd first like to check. Too far. I'd first like to check if there is another pack. Yep, there is another pack. See? That's exactly why we're not just charging in. Three to four points of damage. Decent chance to um, crit. You know what? I do have an idea. Might be a bit wasteful overall. But I don't think that we're going to use the grenades for anything else. For now, let's step over here. That's Solid cover doesn't trigger anything. And we're just going to use a grenade. That's a, an ensured three to four points of damage. Fair enough. And this here should be a kill. There we go. We can always re-stealth. The promotion nonetheless had been very good. Let's try to not get more kills on the Reaper for now. Because um, he already had his promotion this turn. We're re-entering sh the shadows. I'd like to scout out what's happening in this room. Currently, the patrol moved on. Sniper gets into position. We're getting ourselves a couple more rounds.
There we go. Two more rounds, that's good. Yeah, and Hayward. I don't want to go in, so instead. I will go. Let's just continue scouting for now. Probably they must have like walked off somewhere into that direction. Hmm. Confirmed. That here will not trigger because we've been here already. And it'll buy us another turn. Good. So we're fine on the timer. We might end up with triggering that extra pack, which did not happen. I will reposition. Instead, we're continuing to scout. Interestingly enough, I'm pretty sure that the pack didn't walk down here, so they must have walked up here, and since none of the doors have been opened, I am somewhat certain that they have been moving up to this direction. Moving up. Rookie moves in. And our sniper takes a bit of a better shooting position. It's just better shooting angles. And a reload. We'll buy more time. Again, it's all about efficiency. Having ample rounds to to deal with the situation here will prevent us from yeah storming in heads first. Interesting. There are some reinforcements. Good. Since we're almost out of firepower, I am wondering if we should take the high ground. Up here is probably not a good spot to shoot. Still not a very good spot to shoot. Instead, let's move over here. A little bit low on ammunition. I would like to scout a bit further. Alright, so that's the other pack, which is fine. Um, let's just stand here for now and wait for them to maybe come back just a tiny bit. We're overwatching. There are the reinforcements. Ah, three. That's a lot. Let's see if we can kill at least one of them. Okay, Hayward did a very nice job there. See you, Kim. Come on. Holy shit. They, did they just kill the entire... Okay, that almost never happened before. It is very rare to see a successful ambush. Soon our prey will fall. Too good to pass on the opportunity to, to just make that way more easy. Essentially killing the entire pack. Okay. So, how about we are reloading first. Action efficiency is the name of the game. 
and then removing cover. There we go, cover is removed. I already heard the pling in Renvin's promotion, so we're going to fire away with Hayward and trying to give her kill credit. Renvin reloads and overwatches. There's still one more pack. I am on the move. Opening the door. Yeah, that's an advent captain and two advent soldiers. We're closing the door, so that way we can approach without triggering them. Moving up. Renman moves up. And our sniper. And... I wish there was a hole up here. Full cover. And reload. Good. We're probably triggering them now. Apparently the answer is no. Not sure where that is. I go where you tell me. Okay. Rolling. Moving in. Ranvin here moves Rolling. in even further. And let's put our sniper to here. All right, overwatch it is. And next turn we can definitely stop the timer. It's going to be one overwatch shot, unfortunately. Good job, Renman. He's certainly the demolition expert. The X4 charges are active, but the aliens are still working to isolate the transmitter. Eliminate any Good. That's a 45% chance. I don't like that. Could instead move to here. Probably take better chances by taking the flanked um, enemies. Alright, Rookie goes in first. Goes for the trooper. Good job. Yeah, I can't get fully to them. That's half cover only. I don't like the idea of that. That's a 60% chance. I think we were going to take that. Uh, let's give Renman here full cover. Try to get the alien trooper. Perfect. My ammo's running low. Good 
So if we were to pistol shot, that's two to three points of damage. Hmm. That's a low chance, but 30% is even worse. So I think that's not even too bad. It he could always move to here and flank, so there is an inherent advantage in dealing with him this turn. It's a good percent crit chance. Three damage, not too bad. And the vector rifle has a good chance to kill him entirely. 50% to kill him and 40% uh, for crit, so we're looking at 75% chance to eliminate this guy. That's the flawless mission we're talking about. Well done, guys. Good job. And guess what, boys? We're back. Yeah, nice. Three promotions. That's what you want to see. So first things first. Ranven got that nice little demolition um, attitude. I don't know if I like or dislike um, his outfit. You might want to leave comments down below what you think about the leather jacket. It looks a bit like a boy band outfit that some random designer would have chosen. But on the other side, he's so much over the top like uh, with his cigar and aviators. That's almost nice, uh, almost okay for him. He can pull it off. Um, the outfits, by the way, changed a bit since um, I installed Anarchy Child, uh, the DLC. Uh, biggest mistake that I've done in a while, but yeah, um, it's too late to complain now. We got Medical Protocol and our first Corporal with Hayward. That's good because I hope that she can get a lot of promotions and good as well. Uh, Brown here takes the remote start ability. So we're going to hopefully get a lot out of him. Love it. So far, so good. And we get a lot of corpses plus an expanded magazine, which isn't bad either. So here's the engineer. And Sniper plus Reaper as a bond. Uh, are you serious? Of course we're going to do that. That's an awesome idea. And there's our new staff member. <clears throat> so, let's clear for 95 uh, supplies. What would we get here? 101, 95? Okay, in that case, it's 10 days here. And it would be like what? 30 days there? Nope. We're taking the 10 days up here. First, we need to clear this. I'm just trying to optimize the income that we have off of it. In 10 days, we're... Uh, we will have the option to hopefully go for the Proving Grounds and start that building process. Nice, so that's the black side and it is close in our adjacent area. Like it, uh, that's exactly what, we're, uh, what we were waiting for. We don't need more supplies at this point, so I'm continuing to gain intel. Um, short word of advice with regards to intel. Um, in this specific challenge, I will probably forego most of the strategic uh, layer objectives in, the, uh, in favor of getting intel, because we need just so much intel to um, quickly expand later. Um, being here is a bit disadvantageous for us so it's not the perfect start as far as i can see there's only one connected area maybe i'm wrong and maybe there's going to be a connected area over here in which case we would be fine but if it holds true that that's the only area and 
uh, we can't go to here. There is a high likelihood uh, that the mission objectives later will spawn pretty far away and we will need to make our way there. So that's not optimal. And thus you need even more intel. First research done, we got the Advent Officer's Corpse. That gives you Infirmary and the Advent Officer's Autopsy, which is exactly what we want. Uh, before going for resistance communication, we're taking the Advent Officer in because the Advent Officer allows us to go for Proving Grounds and that's what we want. Seven days, ten days clearing. Um, we're still on the Golden Path, haven't lost a single day so far. Let's continue. Got some more intel, that's good. And there's our next mission. Got a scientist, which is perfect. Two specialists, I don't mind that either. And 100 intel, which is very nice. It's also one of the starter missions with the Lost, where uh, we can pretty easily um, scrape by, just by, uh, by using kind of the B team. I want to make sure that we continue putting as much experience in our A team as possible whenever we can though, so that's why, although this being a pretty simple mission, we're probably going in with our A team. Um, yeah, and we get two specialists out of uh, uh, out of that mission, that's perfect, plus a scientist, which is exactly what we need at this point. Um, let's take a look, one more day for the Advent Officer, so yeah, we're doing fine, I would say, it's a really decent start. Alright, this brings us to the end of episode number one of the Revenge of the Exquisite Timing Run, second attempt of me trying to do it on Legendary Iron Man. I hope you enjoyed what you've seen so far. Um, please tell me what you think about Exquisite Timing. Have you tried it already? Is it something that uh, you'd uh, like to do uh, yourself? I'd like to hear from you in the comments down below. If you haven't subscribed by now, it's a perfect, perfect time to hit that sweet little subscribe button and see you in the next run, guys. Take care. Bye-bye.